you know, from uh, University of Bordeaux, and he's going to talk about first passage times of non markovian Gaussian random occurs. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, today I want to tell you a story about first passage times for non markovian Gaussian random workers. So it's not the first time that we speak about first passage times. So basically, first passage problems characterize the first time needed for a by a stochastic variable to reach some target value. So we can define first passage time distribution and its moments, for, for example, the mean first passage time. They are involved in a lot of interesting problems. So for example, transport influence reactions for the simple reason that reactants have to meet before uh, they react together. Or search processes, for example, with this very nice historical e example of searching a sequence on, on DNA. Uh, today, I would like to speak about three paradigmatic first passage problems. So the, the first one is this one. So I have a random worker uh, which diffuses in some confining volume and who is looking for uh, some target, target region. Uh, in this case, the first passage time, the average first passage time is usually infinite and uh, needs to be quantified. The second class of problem is the first passage in infinite space. So uh, usually this, in this kind of problem, the mean first passage time is infinite. And <coughs> a third one would be the search for, a, for an energetically costly configuration. So in this case, it's a relevant kinetics. Uh, we obtain usually Arrhenius uh, kinetics. Uh, <coughs> so the, the idea is that these problems are relatively well understood uh, for Markovian random works, and we ask what happens when we add memory. So as you know, uh, memory appears when the random worker uh, interacts with uh, other variables in its uh, environment. So we have the choice between a Markovian description with n uh, degrees of freedom, n can be large in statistical physics, or some effective projected dynamics for the reactant only, which becomes non-Markovian. <coughs> so as an example of uh, models that we have in mind, um, motion is non-Markovian in all these cases. So if I take a, a reactant which is attached to a polymer or some uh, bead uh, moving uh, with other beads in uh, narrow channels or tracer beads in complex fluids such as nematics, viscoelastic fluids, or uh, the example that we saw yesterday with uh, protein dynamics. And in all these examples, we have um, experiments or models that uh, tell us that, uh, in some limits at least, we have approximately Gaussian dynamics. So <coughs> how could we predict the uh, mean first passage times for this kind of uh, situations? Uh, maybe, so I, I will tell some existing results for these uh, uh, first passage times with uh, memory. So from now on, I assume that I have a Gaussian unbiased random walk, continuous with uh, uh, at long times, which goes as a, a power law for the mean square displacement. So I can have subdiffusion, superdiffusion, or diffusion uh, with a Hurst exponent h here. And uh, so now I assume that I put this uh, random walker in, in confinement or in a potential in the way that we respect the statistical mechanics at a temperature t. So for example, with a generalized Langevin equation. Okay, so uh, there are some exact results to quantify the first passage with memory. For example, in this model, so if I have a, a random walk with telegraphic noise or a random acceleration process. Uh, for the case without confinement, so here I, I, use, I, I also say that uh, I, I have a stationary dynamics, so I don't care about quenches from height to from uh, some temperature to another temperature. So I, I just look at a process with stationary increments. So in this case, we know what is the, the persistence exponent. So in infinite space, the survival probability will decay as a power law. So, uh, but we don't know the prefactor, which is hidden anyway here. Um, so we will try to quantify that. And for relevant kinetics, in fact, there are a lot of theories, and some of them include memory because they give uh, the results in the limit of weak noise for an arbitrarily large number of degrees of freedom. So this seems to be solved, but we will talk about this again. <coughs> uh, there are also general approaches. So for example, pseudo-Markovian approximations, which at some point assume that the propagator for non-Markovian process has the same properties as a Markovian one but it can give wrong scalings. 
And uh, also in the last decades, uh, there have been a lot of works on uh, uh, to obtain perturbative results by uh, looking at an expansion about a Brownian motion. So it's usually in 1D. Uh, and here our goal is to propose a non-exact but also non-perturbative formalism to catch uh, memory effects, uh, the impact of memory on first passage kinetics, also in dimension not only one, but uh, higher. Uh, so the outline of this talk will be uh, the following. So I will speak about these three uh, problems uh, uh, one, one, one by one. So <coughs> first, I, I, I look about the, the first passage time in confinement. So, uh, I, uh, the hypotheses of the theory are the following. So I consider a Gaussian random occur, which is continuous in time, which is Gaussian uh, with stationary increments. So this, is, this means that there is no aging, basically. Uh, so it is unbiased, so it's a symmetric work. I also assume that it is non-smooth, so at uh, short times, uh, basically, so the, the trajectories are uh, non-differentiables, uh, as in Brownian motion. Uh, I assume that the MSD function is known, so I call it psi of t, and that is an input from the model. Okay, uh, I also assume that the MSD diverges at long times, so uh, as I said, I, as t to the 2h, so this is to ensure that uh, the, the random worker will explore the whole the, the available space uh, and, and not being trapped uh, around some, some position. Okay, and I place it in a large confining volume, V. So, <coughs> now we want to predict the mean first passage time. So, the, 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 the first um, uh, equation is uh, this, uh, it's, it's a re renewal equation, so it's a tautology. So, I just consider the probability to be on the target at T, and I say, if it is on the target, it has reached the, the target before at some time tau. So I obtained the integral over the first passage on that tau times the probability to come back on the target at t given that the first passage at tau, uh, the first passage was equal to tau. So <coughs> if it is Markovian, then we can solve this equation, which becomes a convolution equation. But in the non-Markovian case, uh, it's more difficult. But you can still manipulate that to obtain uh, an equation for the average first passage time. So it goes as the volume multiplied by this integral, and here QP of, of t is the probability density to be on the target at a time t after the first passage. So we should focus on what, have to, what happens in the future on the first of the first passage. So to do that, so for example, let's consider several trajectories, so several runs. For each trajectory, we look at the value of the first passage time, we take this value as the origin of the times. So now I, I have rescaled the times. And for example, if I take the average of these green trajectories, what I see is a shift, which I call mu of t, and which is not zero. Whereas the random worker at the beginning was a symmetric random walk. So this means basically that the, the, uh, the, the first passage moment at the first passage, the system is not at equilibrium. And we also observe that the probability distribution functions of these uh, future trajectories are almost Gaussian, and that the variance is ex almost exactly the same as the variance of the initial process. So assuming that these uh, properties are true, we derive the following results for the mean first passage time. So in the large volume limit, it is, can be calculated with this integral, where there is psi of t, psi of t so the MSD, mu of t, which is the average future trajectory, which we don't know yet, and the initial position x naught. And we can derive a self-consistent equation to calculate mu of t, so it's a little bit ugly, but it's quite compact also. Uh, so just by solving this equation here, we can uh, predict mu of t as a function of psi, report here, and then have predictions for the mean first passage time. An important thing also is that if I do a pseudo Markovian approximation, so I would just say that at the first passage, the system is at equilibrium, so it gives me mu of t equals zero, and I will obtain some transition at h equals one over three, which is not uh, seen in, uh, in, in, in simulations. Uh, we can derive the asymptotic behavior of these trajectories uh, for large time, so it goes 
like this. So it's a very simple formula. Uh, x naught minus some power law with the exponent which changes at h equals one half. So basically, we, we should see uh, these qualitative things. Uh, if the work is subdiffusive, then after the first, the first passage, it will come back slowly to the initial position of the, the tag of the random worker. If it is diffusive at long times, but not at all times, then it will tend to a constant. And if it is super diffusive, uh, it will cross the target and uh, go away. <coughs> so the initial condition is never forgotten, and mu is not small, so we can expect a large memory effect. And that's what we see. For example, I take the fractional Brownian motion. Uh, here I plot the first passage time uh, divided by volume. Um, uh, as a function of the initial distance to the target. Uh, blue is simulation, red is a theory, and uh, green is a pseudo-Markovian approximation, which quantitative, it is not quanti quantitatively uh, correct. And we can also check that the uh, value of these average trajectories are correctly predicted by, uh, by the theory. And we can extend the so Here I have explained the theory in 1D. We can extend it to several dimensions. And I, I, I show the results also for non-scale uh, invariant processes. So this is a result in 2D for uh, motion of a bead um, looking for a target in some Maxwell fluid. Um, here, a fractional Brownian motion in 2D. And here, an example in 3D, again, with a Maxwell fluid. So it's, um, we have quantitative and non-perturbative results uh, in these cases. So now I will speak about this second problem of what happens when we have no confinement. So then the mean first passage time is infinite. But then we realized that, so in free space, uh, the survival probability goes as S0 over some uh, power law. So we know the exponents. And in confinement, we have a, 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 a mean first passage time, which is um, finite. And what we have derived is the relation between this prefactor S0 in this case and the limit of the mean first passage time over the volume in the other case under some decoupling approximation, uh, which tells you what happens uh, in the future of the first passage time does not depend on the value of the first passage time. But it's not a very important approximation. Um, <coughs> so then uh, we have uh, this quantity from our for formalism. So we have the prefactor also in uh, unconfined uh, random works. Uh, so we have tested that uh, our theory gives uh, correct results in a lot of cases, again, in one or several dimensions for scale invariant or non-scale invariant processes. And now I want to spend uh, the few minutes that uh, are left to the case of uh, rare events. Um, so just to be specific, uh, uh, I want to take this very simple example. So I have a polymer chain. Let's take it as a stupid uh, bead spring uh, polymer uh, model uh, without uh, hydrodynamic interaction so that all correlation functions uh, are known in absence of, uh, of reaction. And I ask now what's the time that uh, the extension in some direction reaches a value Z, which is much larger than the, the duration radius. So this is uh, obviously a relevant uh, problem because to reach a large extension, then you have to overcome an energy barrier. So we have a, um, a spring in series, and at the end, uh, we see that the beta times the energy is Z over the duration radius squared. But as I told you, we know how to solve this kind of problems in the weak noise limit. Uh, for any number of degrees of freedom in the system. So in principle, the problem is already solved. So here uh, I see, uh, uh, I show the, the results of simulations, so which I have taken from this, uh, uh, this reference. So this is uh, the time rescaled by the exponential factor, which appears in the Arrhenius law, uh, versus the number of degrees uh, of uh, monomers, and I fix here that delta E is 18 kT, so it's already pretty large. So very, very rare uh, events. And what I see is that there is a discrepancy between simulations and predictions of the rigorous uh, weak noise theory, uh, which increases with N. So the weak noise result will not predict the correct behavior with, uh, for large N, and it's it's, in fact, we have a, a, a problem of limit, of commutation of limit, 
basically the weak noise limit kt goes to zero is not cannot be inverted with a large n limit uh, in the polymer model. Okay. <coughs> so we want to catch collective effects. So we adapted the theory by saying that okay. Now uh, we, we have to compute the, the trajectory in the future of a first passage event to this elongation z. And then the, the, we will see, uh, so after the first passage, we will see some retraction dynamics with uh, a, a trajectory mu of t. And so we, we, we adapted the equation. So we have an expression of the mean first passage time as this uh, reactive trajectory. And mu of t is again determined by some equation. So in this equation, there is the MSD, and the initial position as it disappears appeared because it's a relevant problem. It doesn't matter. But here, what is important is the force. So this is the slope of the potential at uh, the, 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 rare, the, the target configuration. I'm almost done. And this is the result for uh, long chains. So this is the, the, the dynamics in the future of the first passage, and this is the equilibrium dynamics, which is not vanishing this time, because if I release a, an equilibrium, equilibrium polymer at some uh, fixed elongation z, I, I will see it retract, but much more slowly than after a first passage. And what we see is that so we have predictions for scaling laws uh, in the non-Markovian theory, in the pseudo-Markovian uh, theory, so we have a factor of 10 of difference, and in the weak noise, we have even different scaling laws with uh, the number of monomers. And we can check our results with simulations. So this is a prediction, and it works perfectly. And here are also existing theories that uh, attempted to go uh, beyond the weak noise uh, limit. And we see that uh, so there are still discrepancies uh, with them. And uh, yeah, that's it. <coughs> and the conclusion is that the state of a system at first passage is not a stationary state. So basically, uh, even uh, if we look at equilibrium processes, which are non-Markovian, uh, we, we get a non-equilibrium uh, state at the first passage. And if we analyze the trajectory in the future, we get information for the kinetics of first passage times for these three situations. Uh, we can generalize it to imperfect reactions. So if you want to, to have information of that, you go to, to the poster by Tony Mendes. And I didn't speak about in, in stationary initial conditions, in, in which case there are weird uh, persistent exponents, ex, exponents that appear. And uh, Nicola told uh, you about it yesterday. So thanks for your attention. Are there questions? <coughs> yeah, I'll just. Nobody, nobody is, ah, Benjamin, you have a question? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> In principle, yes, but uh, then you have to do all the theory again, and uh, I think the second moment does not just depend on mu, so you have to compute other. The fluctuations of the average, uh, yeah, 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 somehow other things have been uh, appear. Yeah, the question is. So I was um, very much taught by the very challenging. Um, so when you showed those uh, fractional ground in motion, right? so how do I understand that you put a Fractional ground in motion in a confinement. Yeah. So basically, this means that when, when the FEM hits the boundary on computers, it doesn't know that it hit the boundary. Or, or how do I, maybe, maybe. No, no. Uh, so, what we did, in fact, uh, so we have done two things because at the time we didn't know how to put confinement in, in for the FEM. Yeah, it was done by Metzler uh, two years yeah. ago. Yeah. So uh, what we did is that we have done the same as in 1D. So we said uh, if we have a reflecting boundary here, maybe it's just the same as uh, hitting a second target here. So we analyze this first passage problem. OK? And then uh, we, we did another thing that we, we produced uh, an algorithm, which is uh, with the Hosking algor algorithm, then uh, um, we, we generate x uh, a plus one from uh, the previous positions, and then we rejected the, the positions that went beyond this wall. But um, 
what, what we saw is that with these two algorithms, if uh, the, the volume is large, we got more or less the same results. So basically what you're saying is that um, the ensemble of parts condition to not go in there, to not pass yeah. in this boundary, is basically fully contained in the ensemble of parts. So it's just a change of measure argument. Uh, I don't know. If <laughs> I mean, it, otherwise it cannot have the same. No, this is a very, this is just a... No, no, in fact, a I mean, it don't, it don't be a fractional Brownian motion anymore if you have a boundary. Yeah, yeah. of course, that's of course. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that would be, in fact, we also have done simulations with a, so a generalized Langevin equation with a power law kernel inside some harmonic potential, and harmonic potential can be seen as a confinement too, and we obtain the same results as here. Thanks, thanks. Andrea, you had a question? Yes, I mean, you know, the... the in the past, a long ago, there was, uh, you know, exactly for this kind of processes, uh, uh, Mark Rausch and Markov, and there was this perturbative approach uh, uh, to calculate the perturbance exponent uh, by our <laughs> terms. Uh, <laughs> so there was yeah. the names uh, now, uh, Irving, uh, 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 Irving and others. So I was wondering whether you checked uh, how this... Yeah, yeah, in fact, uh, so all the theory... Uh, so the theory is definitely not exact in the general case, but uh, we think it's, uh, we have arg strong arguments to say that it's exact at first order of perturbation, and then we recover all exact results that are known in the literature. Actually, that's uh, one of my questions. Actually, there's one model we know that's a random acceleration process for which you can actually calculate analytically, right? It's a non-Markov process. Uh, okay, Does so this work? one we cannot, <laughs> because it's, no, it's not in right. the initial hypothesis. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Okay, all right. If there is no other question, let's uh, thank Tomo again. And we'll